How to construct the auxiliary plane? What is an auxiliary plane? It is an imaginary plane perpendicular to the fault plane and also perpendicular to the lineation on the fault plane. Let us consider a case of a fault plane which strikes 50 degree and 180 degree plus 50 degree which is 230 degree which has a dip of say this is the strike amount the dip of 40 degree and the dip direction of 50 degree plus 90 degree is equal to 140 degree. These three angles say are measured clockwise from geographic north direction. So, let us construct the great circle and then we will proceed. Let us plot these two points on the periphery 10, 20, 30, 40 and 50 and then 230, 180, 190, 200, 210, 220 and 200, 230 degree the strike is plotted. The deep direction is 140 degree let us plot it this is 50 so and this is 90, 100, 110, 120, 130 and 140. Done. Next I have to use this 40 degree deep value to do that. I need to move the tracing sheet, bring this at the east side, bring that point at the west side and from here I will move 40 degree inside 10, 20, 30, 40. This point is marked. Now I can rotate the tracing sheet, bring the 50 degree at the north and this point over here. Then I have to draw a great circle. As I did earlier, this is the deep amount which is 40 degree. So, in this way the fault plane has been drawn. Let us call it FP and this is the fault plane has been plotted. Next, we will consider a lineation. Now, the lineation that lies on the fault plane in reality has to be a point plotted on this great circle. So, I consider say this is the lineation. Suppose it is, suppose its plunge and trend were measured in the field using clinometer or Brunton and then we plotted this L point which will plot on the fault plane. Now, we have to construct the auxiliary plane. Let us see how to proceed. First, we have to plot the pole of the fault plane. To plot the pole of the fault plane, I have to rotate again the tracing sheet and orient in this way, strike at the north and another strike point at the south and then I have to move 90 degree inside 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80 and 90. So, this is the pole of FP, I can call it small p and just to make things clear for the students, I am writing here 90 degree movement and again I go back. So, you can see that the pole of the fault plane has been plotted. Next, from the lineation data, which is plotted over here, I bring this, rotate the tracing sheet in a manner that that point comes on the north-south line. And from this, if I drop a line over here, 
this point let me use another color pen represents actually the trend of the lineation and just for our information this angle how whatever it comes out is basically the plunge fine but now what I do is from here I have to move 90 degree inside 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80 and 90 and I get a point so I can call it L dash so what has happened from here to there I have moved Ninety degree angle. First, a pole was found, and then from the lineation, I brought the trend point over here, and then I moved ninety degree inside and plotted a point L dash. L dash is a line in space. Now, this point P and L dash has to be drawn, has to be joined by a great circle, and that will represent the auxiliary plane. So, we have to find a great circle how to achieve that maintaining the same center keep rotating the tracing sheet either this side or that side keep rotating and you will find a specific position when P and L will fall under the same great circle that has to be found by trial and error method. And it has been obtained. So now let me draw this blue grid circle represents now the auxiliary plane. How it looks like if I go back matching north with north this blue grid circle represents the auxiliary plane of the fault and where is the fault? This grid circle represents the fault. So, what we used? We used the fault data and the lineation data. From there, we have plotted the auxiliary plane. I will first pick up the case of non Andersonian stress regime. What is that? It is a situation when the three principal stress axes are not perpendicular to each other. This is a case, as I am showing, is a vertical stress axis, and these two are horizontal. All the st three stress axes are perpendicular. This is a case of Andersonian stress regime. A deviation from it such as this is a non-Andersonian stress regime when the three panes are displaying the three principal stress axes. Note that none of these panes are horizontal nor they are vertical. So this non-Andersonian stress regime related principal stress axis plot which is easy I am going to demonstrate on the equal area net or the Schmidt net. Randomly I am taking like these two points north and south and any grid circle I am drawing that grid circle. Now here I am taking two points you will see progressively the problem statement. I take this point 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80 and 90. Imagine in a non-Andersonian stress regime this is the principal stress axis sigma 1 and this is the principal stress axis sigma 2. We know that in the stereo net a point is, represent in, is represented in three dimension as a straight line. So, sigma 1 and sigma 2 were two straight lines in space. I have taken their 90 degree angle. Note that sigma 1 and sigma 2 are neither lying at the center that means none of them are vertical lines nor they are falling on the periphery that means none of them are horizontal lines. So, this is a non-Andersonian stress regime. If I bring back the tracing sheet match north of tracing sheet with the north in the stereo net this is how sigma 1 and sigma 2 look like. Imagine that the plunge and trend data of sigma 1 and sigma 2 were given and using them I have plotted the sigma 1 and the sigma 2. Now the question that I am raising here is that given this information plot sigma 3 principal stress axis 
plot sigma 3 principal stress axis. How to do it? From the given sigma 1 and sigma 2, you can find out a great circle that passes through both sigma 1 and sigma 2 and that is drawn. This great circle represents a plane in three dimension which contains the two lines sigma 1 and sigma 2. This is the first job the great circle is to be drawn. So, now I hope you understand that I first drew the line and took them 90 degree apart and then I started stating the problem. Okay. After this plane is being drawn, this great circle represents an inclined plane, I have to find out the pole of this great circle. Call it plane P, what I need to do? I have to find out pole of plane P. What is pole? Pole is an imaginary line which is perpendicular to a given plane. Imagine this is a given plane and it is really existing. I think of an imaginary line which is perpendicular to the given plane. So, this line is called the pole of the real given plane. We have to find out the pole of this great circle. So, to do that what I need to do? I need to move the tracing sheet in a manner that this point comes to the north in the stereo net which can be found over here. This is the end mark. Once I give it an anti-clockwise rotation, naturally this point will also move in this direction. You will see when I set this point at north, this point will come at south and I do that. So, as I said the rotation has been made, this point has come to the north, that point has come to the south. Now, here from this west, I come straight along this line and reach here. From here, I have to move 90 degree inside towards the center, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80 and 90. This is the pole of this plane. So, what I have done? For students, I can write more explicitly. I have moved 90 degree inside. Now, I rotate back, make the north of the marked in the tracing sheet to be superposed on the north of the stereo net. South is matched, center is matched, east, west are also matched. So, this point is the pole I can write as P1 and I write here P1 is the pole. This P1 is now recognized as the third principal stress axis which I can write here as sigma 3. So, imagine the plunge and trend of sigma 1 and sigma 2 were given, you plotted and they have to be at 90 degree angle. So, maintaining that I first drew the great circle and plotted them, but imagine from the data from plunge and trend you can plot this and that. Then draw the great circle, this represents the plane on which both sigma 1 and sigma 2 are lying. How it can be demonstrated? Imagine this is sigma 1 and this is sigma 2. These two are plotted as points sigma 1 and sigma 2. Now, the plane that contains both that means my hand which is containing now both the planes, this hand is represented by that great circle. And once the pole is plotted that represents the third principal stress axis. Here I took sigma 1 and sigma 2 and I have obtained sigma 3. I could have written here or the problem might have been like sigma 1 and sigma 3 are given plot sigma 2. I mean any two are given and plot the third one. We are now going to see a stress related problem where stereo net will be used. Now, here comes the problem. Imagine a plane is given of some strike deep and deep direction and there is a line of action of stress which is in the space. The question is 
Suppose a vertical projection of this stress is made on that plane, what will be the plunge and trend of line ac of action of the stress? Let me make a sketch. I am saying that this is a given inclined plane P and here is a line in space L. It is representing a stress either up plunge or in a down plunge sense. Suppose I make a vertical projection of all these points and let that intersect on the plane and I join these points by a straight line. Then for this projection what is the plunge and trend of this line of action of stress. So, I take certain values say this line is having the line L is having a plunge of 40 degree and a trend of 60 degree and this plane is having a strike of 20 degree 200 degree. These are measured clockwise from geographic north direction in that sense. Dip takes some angle 50 degree and the dip direction of plane P is 110 degree. So, our first job is to draw this plane as a great circle on the stereo net. Note that the strike is 20 degree and 200 degree. So, from the starting position I mark the 20 degree and then this is 180, 190 and 200 degree. So, this is my strike of the plane. Next I bring this strike by rotating the tracing sheet bring this point over north what is found in the stereo net and south over here. So, in this way the strike can be placed over here. The deep direction I stated is 110 degree which is over here. Note that from north which is over here now to east is 90 degree and then 100 and 110. So, this is the deep direction and the deep amount I stated it is 50 degree. So, I have to move 50 degree inside towards the center 10, 20, 30, 40 and 50 degree. Once this is done I have to draw a great circle passing through this point, this point and that point. So, I can draw that. So, this represents the plane on which the stress there is, this is the plane on which the vertical projection of the stress has to be found out. Now, again come back to the problem. So, this is plotted as a great circle. I want to plot this line right now which has 40 degree plunge and 60 degree trend. To do that this is the orientation of the tracing sheet before any work to be started north matching with north, south, east and west center is matched. Now, first is plot the trend amount which is 60 degree. So, this is 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 and 60. This is the trend value. Okay. Now, what I need to do? I have to move this T point and match with the geographic sorry the stereo net east direction. This is the stereo net east direction and with that I have matched. 
center of in the tracing sheet is matching with the stereo net center and in this position I have to move inside 40 degree angle. So, if I move 10, 20, 30 and 40 degree. So, in this case I find coincidentally the line of action of stress is actually on the great circle. That means, this line itself we can say the projection is the line itself. So, I write here again. So, I write here this as 10, 20, 30 and 40 and I go back in this way. So, this is the line, the line of projection, vertical projection is the given line only. Now, to change the situation, I will set another problem here. Suppose this line L is having 60 degree trend and 80 degree plunge L1. The line L1 has 60 degree trend and 80 degree plunge and we will redo the problem right now. Let us plot L1 in the tracing sheet. So, to do that again the T point is brought over there and now this time instead of 40 degree I will take 80 degree 50, 60, 70 and 80. This is the plot of L1 line. So, I can come back and write this as L1. This was my L. Now, for L1 if I make a vertical projection that projection will intersect this plane at some line that line is to be found out. So, what to do now? Let us go back to our diagram. This is the diagram. Once we are making a vertical projection basically we are thinking the intersection between this vertical plane and the given P plane. So, that means I have to find out a stereo plot of this vertical plane. If I find out the vertical plane's stereo plot and I find the intersection between that stereo plot and this plane's great circle, that will be a point and that point will represent this line LP. So, what to do here? The exercise will be I have to draw a great circle, so called great circle passing through L1 and which is vertical. To do that, I rotate the tracing sheet maintaining the center matching with stereo net center and bring L1 point on the east west line of the tracing sheet. This is the east west line on the tracing, I am sorry, on the east west line of the stereo net. This is the east west line, and I can draw now a straight line passing through L1 and passing through center. So, what this straight line indicates? It passes through the center. So, this represents a vertical plane passing through L1 line. Now, I can see that vertical plane passing through L1 line is intersecting the given plane at point I can call it as LP. So, LP is a vertical projection of L1 line on the given plane. Now,